having come and gone, right, but Jackson, is man. locked in to the 2024 playoffs. Yeah. And this being his last full-time season, you know, I expect going to go on the outside will be out by the wall. Now, that's the first challenge right here. And now, Marty, it's up to the pit crew. They don't need the perfect stop, just a solid four tires. And here's the interesting part, Steve. Rudy Fugel has now flipped to the strategy that Chris Gabehold has played all night long. And these two cars, as you will see, just one pit stop apart. William Byron has a little more trouble getting into his stop. these two and the five of Larson. Now I expect the Larson to definitely jump in front of the five. We'll just have to, or excuse me, the five in front of the 11. We just have to see how the new tires pay off. Bubba Wallace, Jeff, now comes to pit road as well. Dave. And before the cycle started, Steve, Bubba had only picked up one spot on the, on the track. So you got to do something different, right? So I think that's why they switched strategies here and went to the one that uh, Denny Hamlin and others were running as well. One lap later, Bubba Wallace comes to pit road, expecting his pit crew to do a quick stop for him. Or maybe a little bit of change, but really, no complaint from the driver on the balance, perhaps just keeping up with the track. Two tires on. Here come the other two. Fuel going in. There's a little on pit road as well. Busy pit road, decisions by crew chiefs. Let's set the stage for the win. Five of Larson, still a pit stop to go. A little bit fresher tires, about six laps on Denny Hamlin. Huge gap, but a huge advantage. Can the 11 chase down the five car? It's nearly a half a lap, but almost six or seven tenths, six or seven tenths of a second faster every lap on the newer tires. It's gonna be. These playoffs dip with Atlanta and Watkins Glen, the Roble, Talladega. These first two rounds have, I think, the, the most roller coaster potential, right? We could have moments, wrecks, anything could change kind of the complexion of these playoffs. Here's Asias, Kyle Busch, after that thriller week in Daytona where Harrison Burton won, narrowly ahead of this man here that we're looking back at from Chris Bush's car. He needed and still needs a win to get in, but that's getting increasingly more difficult as Kyle Busch runs in 16th place. Not only that, but he's for 19 straight seasons, he's won a win. He's, he has won a race. And for a guy like Kyle Busch, it's accustomed to winning. This has been a very difficult year. Dave, he does not want that streak to end. No, he does not, and he does, he'd like the car to get a little bit better, but he says it's okay tight, meaning it won't steer a little bit, but that is good, but then it just goes loose. Goes loose and the longer the run goes on, so haven't been able to quite fix that for Kyle Busch tonight. Uh, another win here at Darlington looks far out of reach, Marty. They've had 231 laps led and counting. There have been very few cracks in the armor for Kyle Larson tonight. But the handling not quite as good on the five car. Listen in. I can maybe just be a little bit freer. We should have wrapped the top of the wall off before. That was a really good pocket for speed. And I think you have to turn them well enough to be able to do that. It'll be very small. I've been a bit of a clean air here, too. Is there traffic already tighter? So with a three and a half second lead, Jeff Kyle Larson and Cliff Daniels feel like the car can be even better. But how does Cliff Daniels even know that there might be a little bit of speed if Kyle Larson takes an exit a little bit higher off turn four? Well, those guys, they, they work so well together. And I think actually what he was saying is that we need to make the car better so you can run higher on the exit of turn four. He said there's speed if you can run higher on the exit. You can't do it now. So we're going to make a small adjustment the next time we stop. Well, we have a big battle going right here. You see on the bottom right, that is Chris Busher, who has now been overtaken by the eight of Kyle Busch. And why that matters is because this gap right here is down to four. I mentioned we needed 12 spots between the two. Well, now on the bottom of the screen is a 23 of Bubba Wallace. And if you look up here, he's got three cars up to Chastain right in front of him that I think he can get. Here's Reddick coming back to him in a hurry. I mean, the 23 is much better than the 45, the 1, and even the 54 in their tire situation. So, now it's down to three points. I think this wow. is going to be 
a high pressure, high nerve situation for the 17 and the 23 over these last 60 laps. Could it be back-to-back -back races at Darlington Raceway that breaks Chris Bush's heart? Remember earlier in the year when he was fighting with Tyler Reddick and he was looking good for a victory and Reddick tried to slide jump on him and ended up in the wall. And he was furious. Busher was furious with the driver of the 45 then.